Hello and welcome. So far in these lectures on psychrometrics that we've began, we've already covered the concept of absolute humidity ratio. We covered relative humidity and the dew point temperature. And the next concept that I'd like to introduce is that of two things that are very, very similar. The adiabatic saturation temperature and the wet bulb temperature. And we'll find that they're not exactly the same, but for everyday purposes, they essentially are. So I'm going to begin with the adiabatic saturation temperature, which is what most people believe really is the true wet bulb temperature, if there was a, an ideal case. And what we're going to do is start with a little bit of a, an experiment. So if we have a channel, and let me draw this out. In which we have air coming in. Ooh, sorry. Air is coming in. This is air. And it's got some temperature. We're going to call this state 1 over on this side and it has some unknown absolute humidity level and it's going to flow over this very very long channel of water this is of H2O and we'll assume that there's some entry here where water can flow uh, we'll say a fluid and if you'd make this channel long enough, what you could reasonably assume is that the air on the other side here will be at a t different temperature, a lower temperature, and will be at a different humidity because we're actually going to start evaporating some of this water into the air. And if you have this long enough, this will be corresponding to saturation. That's the ideal case. And of course, you can assume that there's no other heat transfer going around. So we say in this whole long chamber is insulated. So there's no heat transfer. So all that's happening is water's coming in, it's being evaporated, and that's going to cool the air down. And so with this, we can start analyzing the mass balances and energy balances of this system. So let me, this and this relative humidity here is 100% in the ideal case. So let's begin by looking at a mass balance, because we know mass is conserved, of simply the H2O. So let me scroll down. What is coming into the system? in, well, we have, well, we'll just call M of vapor 1. What else do we have in? We have some fluid coming in. We can also think of this as the amount being evaporated into the air. And that has to equal the mass vapor coming out. So as much of the water vapor coming out. So this is in, and this side is out. Now, in a lot of these cases, we don't really know the mass flow rate of vapor, but we have this, this nice relation between the mass flow rate of vapor and air, and it's related to the absolute humidity level. And so if you want to know this mass flow rate of just the vapor, you can always take the mass flow rate of the air and multiply that by the humidity ratio at that moment. So let's rewrite this with the vapor being, the mass flow rate of the vapor being replaced by mass flow rate of the air along with the absolute humidity ratio. So we have this mass flow rate of air, and we're saying the mass flow rate of air is the same from in and out. All the air coming in has to be coming out. So I actually don't need a subscript on that. And we'll keep at the same amount evaporating. So 
This is the exact same thing, except now we've done this replacement. And now if you've noticed, we have a mass flow rate of air on this side and this side, and so we can combine like terms, and so we'll leave the evaporation of water on one side, and we'll have mass flow rate of air, that's going to be omega 2 minus omega 1. So just a little bit of algebra. So let's move on to the energy balance. Uh, right, energy balance. Energy balance. And so if we look at this, we've assumed that there is no heat transfer, or no Q is the letter most thermodynamic text would use, or and there's no work, we're not turning a crank or applying any f real force here. So the only energy components that we have is energy related to the mass coming in and out of this open system. And if all of this doesn't make sense, uh, I suggest you look at some thermodynamics videos on open systems, and this will become much more clear. So the energy coming in is related to, we're going to say the mass flow rate of air times this, this is enthalpy, this is an important point, enthalpy per unit mass dry air, which is how this is usually specified. And I'll show you why that is in a second. And that's coming in, we have the, the fluid being evaporated times the fluid coming in times its initial enthalpy, and that equals mass flow rate of the air times the enthalpy per unit mass of dry air going out. So let me go on an aside here and just talk about this enthalpy. If you talk about the total enthalpy in the extensive property, that's the enthalpy related to the air and to the vapor. But and if I make these these terms now per unit mass, you'd have something like this. I just broke these into per unit mass, so this is enthalpy per unit mass for vapor, per unit mass per air. And now if I define my total enthalpy or the enthalpies here with regards to making that, this is big H divided by the mass flow rate of the air, key point, not a vapor of air, then if I take this here and divide by air, this cancels, so I'm left with H of air plus M dot V divided by dot A, H V, and you should recognize what this is. This is omega, absolute humidity ratio. And so what you're left with is, when I say H here, I'm talking about it's a combination of these two things right here. And so we can actually put that in, and we'll do that in a second. So let's do a simplification where we, let's replace this mass flow rate of the water with this, which is related to the air. So we'll have all, everything with related to the mass flow rate of the air. So let's go ahead and rewrite that. So we have m.h1, and now I'm replacing this term with what we have here. So we have m dot a omega 2 minus omega 1 is equal to m dot a h2. Oh, can't forget the h of the fluid. Almost a careless mistake. So now if you notice, there's a mass flow rate of air on every term in this, so that can drop out. And we can take these enthalpies that are defined per unit mass of air, and we can replace them with this, these terms over here. So we have HA plus omega HV all at 1, omega 1, HV 1, plus omega 2 minus omega 1, HF is equal to HA plus omega. These are all state 2. And now we're going to replace this, because this is an ideal gas of air, we're going to say 
and we're going to just choose an arbitrary reference temperature that makes sense for us because we'll find out that this only matters for temperature differences. So we can say that H, we can make this claim. So I'm going to replace these enthalpies of air with this, this term. So you have Cp, and this is related to air, T of air 1. So mega H vapor 1 plus, let me quickly write this back down. I don't want to skip too many steps. Again, we have Cp, Ta2 plus omega 2 H vapor 2. And so now, since I'm already at my self inflicted time limit, I'll just, what we want to do is solve for that initial absolute humidity ratio at the inlet because that's what we really were interested in. So if you solve for omega 1, I'll leave this as an exercise for you, the reader, you'll get this relation. T2 minus T1 plus omega 2 HFG 2 divided by H G one oh H V. I've been using this is vapor, but this is the latent heat of vaporization. And so what we know now is that these what were these terms? These are the enthalpy of the water vapor, and we know that <coughs> we can assume that it's only, this is only, these are only functions of temperature, and really it can be taken to be equal to the enthalpy of the saturated vapor at that given temperature. So you can go look up your saturated water table, look at a given temperature, and then you can get these values. And so I'm over time, and actually I think in the next video I'll go through this algebra a little slower so that's, that's not so mysterious. But just be aware of what we all did here. Some fundamental thermodynamics. We did a mass balance and an energy balance across this type of setup where we have an insulated long chamber of water that's being evaporated into the air. And really that's the, the fundamental understanding of what these adiabatic saturation temperature and wet bulb temperature is. It's We want to know how much can that temperature go down solely by evaporating water. And so I hope you'll join me in the next videos. See you soon.